Hi, my name is Zoe Schnepp. I'm a senior lecturer in chemistry at the University of Birmingham, and this is a talk about uh, toxicology. It's aimed at A-level students of chemistry and biology, and it's based on a, uh, a lecture that I've actually given to first year undergraduates in the School of Chemistry at the University of Birmingham. So we'll start with looking at what do we mean by toxic? So you see that skull and crossbones symbol uh, of toxic um, on, on something, and you immediately think of toxic as being something that's gonna kill you. But actually a toxin is any substance that can cause severe injury or death as a result of physical chemical interaction with living tissue. Okay, so toxicology is really about uh, chemicals that can cause, cause harm in any way uh, to a living organism or to an environment. Okay, and we're going to focus mainly today on the human body. So let's look at roots of exposure as a way to start. How do chemicals actually get into the body to cause harm? We're going to look at three main ways they can do this. The first is skin absorption, so dermal absorption. And there are many chemicals that can actually go through healthy, intact skin. Okay, so things like aniline, uh, organophosphate, uh, organophosphate, DMSO is dimethyl sulfoxide, that's a solvent used in chemical laboratories. Okay, and this is the reason that we wear uh, gloves when we're working with hazardous chemicals in a laboratory. And there's actually lots of different types of safety gloves uh, that you can wear depending on the chemical that you're working with. The second main route of exposure to harmful chemicals for our body is inhalation. So gases and vapors is obvious, you can breathe them in, but you can also inhale solid powders. Uh, and the damage that these can do really depends on the particle size uh, of those little bits of solid powder. Okay, but in general, smaller particles tend to go further into the lungs. And these can cause harm in various ways. So larger particles, ones that get lodged further up, if they lodge in the mucus, that can end up being swallowed. Uh, and so that chemical can enter the body via the digestive tract. Uh, solids, right, so small particles, if they go far into the lungs, they might dissolve in the, in the lung fluids. So the little thin layer of fluid that you get on the inside uh, of, the, of the little capsules within the lungs. Uh, so uh, solids can also cause physical uh, irritation to the lining of the lungs and cause damage uh, without actually sort of uh, becoming dissolved in the lungs. Okay, so coal or silica dust, uh, brick dust as well, can cause things like fibrosis. So that's damage uh, to the inside of the lungs. Okay, so our third route of exposure that we're going to look at is ingestion. So this isn't so much a concern in the laboratory. This is why we have really strict safety rules about not eating or chewing gum in a chemical laboratory. Okay, and as long as you avoid those, you're going to avoid uh, ingesting any chemicals. Uh, so ingestion in toxicology is more of a concern in global public health. So, for example, there's a lot of countries in the world where there's high levels of arsenic naturally occurring uh, in groundwater and surface water. Uh, so people, if they're either sourcing their water to drink from or, or to cook from, from that groundwater, or if they're growing rice, for example, in paddy fields where the water is contaminated with arsenic, they might end up taking a lot of arsenic into their bodies. And that's actually, that causes uh, really severe uh, acute and chronic health effects uh, in those populations. Okay, so ingestion is a really major uh, problem. Right, so we've looked at three ways that things can get into the body. So let's look at the types of adverse effect that these chemicals can have on the body. Okay, and we can classify these in different ways. So the first way we can classify them is these adverse effects can be local or systemic. So local is something that occurs only at the site of exposure. So if you drop some concentrated HCl on your hand, you're going to get an instant burn on the site uh, where you've dropped it on your hand. That is a local adverse effect. It's not going to then damage anywhere in the rest of your body. Systemic, on the other hand, is something that affects the whole body. So for example, tetraethyl lead is a chemical that used to be added to petrol, to gasoline, uh, as an anti-knocking agent. It was phased out a long time ago now. Uh, and uh, people would, uh, it used to get into the uh, exhaust fumes, people would breathe that in, uh, and it would be something that would uh, affect the entire central nervous system of that person, particularly young children uh, where their nervous system is developing. Okay, so that's something that then affects the whole body. Another way of classifying adverse effects is that they can be reversible or irreversible. So the liver, for example, is quite good at healing itself uh, if it's been damaged by various uh, chemical compounds. So for example, ethanol um, that we take in through, through alcoholic drinks. Uh, effects can also be irreversible. So again, going back to that example of tetraethyl lead that damages the central nervous system, once that damage is done, it cannot be healed by the body. That's an irreversible adverse effect. 
Okay, another way of classifying adverse effects is that they can be immediate or delayed. So again, going back to our example of hydrochloric acid, you drop some concentrated hydrochloric acid on your hand, there's an immediate reaction of, ow, that really hurts, and you've got that burn on your hand. Okay, it happens straight away. It's an immediate adverse effect. Delayed adverse effects can happen hours or days or even years after the exposure to the chemical compound. Okay, so one example of this is dithylstilbestrol. This was a drug that was given to mothers who suffered from recurrent miscarriages. Okay, and what happened was the fetus uh, in the mother was exposed to the dithylstilbestrol. And many, many years later, when that child, uh, the, the female children particularly, that were the born to these mothers who'd taken the dithylstilbestrol, developed certain types of cancers. Okay, so this is something that happened decades after the actual exposure of these fetuses uh, in the womb. Okay, so that's different types of adverse effects. So let's look at chemical interactions because we're quite, well, we're extremely complex organisms and we need to think about, we have an extremely complex environment around us, we might be exposed to multiple different chemicals and they can actually interact together to have different effects on the body. So how can they do that? The first one is simple, it's just an additive effect. Okay, so you get the effect of chemical one and the effect of chemical two and you get the total effect of both of them on your body. An example of this is organic chlorine, pesticides, DDT and dieldrin, you get the toxic effect of both of them adding up in the body. Okay, uh, something, another way that uh, the effects can add together, but then to create a more significant effect is called synergistic chemical interactions. And this is where the total effect is more than the sum of just those two individual chemicals. So for example, cigarette smoke and asbestos fibers, uh, both can increase the risk of lung cancer, but together they increase the risk of lung cancer by a factor of 40, and that's well beyond those individual risks. Okay, so this is an example of a synergistic effect where they're both sort of exacerbating the effect, the effect uh, of each other. The other side of that is uh, interactions that can be antagonistic. And this is where one chemical counteracts the other. And it's the basis of antidotes. Okay, so if you've got, for example, uh, ethanol in the body, um, that can, sorry, if, you, if you've taken methanol into the body, that's toxic, it can cause blindness. And ethanol can actually antagonize the toxic effects of methanol uh, by displacing it from the enzyme that oxidizes the methyl, methanol. Okay, so the ethanol is antagonizing the uh, effect of the methanol. The final type of chemical interaction we're going to look at is potentiation. And this is where one harmless chemical makes another one much worse. Okay, so for example, isopropanol at low concentrations is harmless. Carbon tetrachloride uh, has harmful toxic effects on the body. But if you have both of them together, the isopropanol at the low harmless concentrations makes the effect of that carbon tetrachloride much, much worse. Okay, so this is an example of potentiation. That harmless chemical is making the effect of the toxic chemical much, much worse. Okay, so a final point to make that's really important here is that the dose makes the poison. And this is going to form the basis of the experiment that we're going to do on the uh, Kenban page uh, on, on the Kenban website. Okay, so for example, vitamins are critical to the human body. There's also lots of essential elements that are essential uh, that are critical for the human body to function properly. But both of these are toxic at really high doses. Okay, so at small doses, they're essential to the body. At high doses, they're toxic. Even water can actually be toxic if you drink enough. So dose is actually a really important factor when we think about uh, measuring toxicology. And that's, as I said, the basis for the experiment are on the uh, Kenban webpage about this.